Xactimate tips and tricks. Uh, first thing I want to do is go over a practice that's really helped me speed up my estimate writing, uh, help me pump out more estimates, and ultimately put more money in my pocket. So uh, let's start with, uh, I want to give you a picture of what it used to look like when I first started writing Xactimate. And so let's see, let's create a scenario first. So let's say we are replacing drywall. Let's say we have a room that has 100 square foot of water damaged drywall. And let's say the baseboards are damaged and we're going to replace them. Uh, let's say that the flooring, let's say we have some wood flooring in there as well. And this wood flooring is going to be, uh, let's just say it's it all needs to be replaced. So what I would typically do when I first started is uh, I would probably start with drywall and I would come up here to my categories I'd scroll down and look for drywall. Okay. Come to my selectors and it's going to be half inch drywall. Let's just say and find the generic hung tape ready for texture. And so that would be a hundred square foot that we're replacing. So I'd say, okay. And then, well now that drywall needs to be textured. So I'd come back to my categories, scroll down again, find drywall, uh, come back over here to my selectors. I would scroll through looking for the word texture or anything that has to do with it. And because there's a thousand line items, it would take me forever. So then I'd probably get tired of looking and I'd come up here and I'd type in texture. And then anything that has texture in it would pop up. And so here we go. And so because it's a hundred square foot and not the whole room, we would just do a light hand texture. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to do 120 square foot because you want to feather your texture. You don't want to just texture just a new drywall uh, without feathering it out. So I'm going to put that in there. Uh, and then we'll just do one more line item. So then I'd come back and let's say baseboards and I would scroll down look for my finished carpentry then i'd find the baseboards let's just say they're three and a quarter inch baseboards again a lot of scrolling a lot of searching looking around um and it's and it's time consuming it takes time and uh wears on you after a while and so that's pretty much the process that i would use to find my line items but as time went by, I started to memorize these line items uh, because I type them in over and over on a daily basis. And what I noticed is if I come down here and just type these line items in without searching for them, uh, it just goes so much faster. And of course, you're not going to memorize all the line items. But what I'll do is without putting in any of the measurements in, I just type out all the line items that I know I'm going to be using uh, just to start off with. And after I get these typed out, what I'm going to do is go back and work on my measurements. But you get the point. I mean, you see how fast this is compared to searching everything. And so, again, you're not going to memorize everything overnight. You will get it down if, if it's something that you're mindful of and you start to uh, try to memorize the items that you use on a normal basis. So then I'm going to come back up here to the top and start working on my measurements. I'll say 100 square foot of drywall uh, texture. 120 square foot um, and baseboards so we're going to do all the baseboards um, same thing with masking and taping uh, come down here to paint and uh, we're going to assume that we aren't allowed to do the ceiling so we're just going to do the walls uh, same here we'll assume that we can only do walls oh Right here. So two coats and one coat. Uh, something that you may not know, may may not know, depends on how long you've been doing this. Uh, typically, insurance companies, they are going to approve two coats for new drywall. And if it's uh, continuous paint, then they're just going to approve one coat. So um, 
I, I mean, I, I have a hundred reasons why that's uh, not a great practice, but it's not the practice I created. It's just the life we live in. So uh, this two coats is going to be for the drywall that we put in. And then this one coat is going to be for the rest of the walls that uh, is existing. So just to show you, again, this is something that, you know, I just didn't think of until, you know, well after I've been writing estimates. And so if you use your formulas, uh, you see we have a hundred square foot of draw, or really we're going to paint a new texture. So we're going to be painting for two coats, 120 square foot. And so we're going to take this W for wall and we're going to erase that and put 120 square foot. So that's what we get to do for two coats. Uh, and then for one coat, we get to do everything else. So if you will do wall minus 120, what that's going to do is give you the uh, quantity of square foot that you'll be painting all the walls minus the 120 that you did the two square foot. So this is just, it, it seems uh, pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory, but honestly it took me forever to kind of catch on to to little things like that and so uh, actually while we're talking about these uh these little um i guess formulas let's go over a couple more that took me forever to gather that uh i, I finally use all the time now so let's say that you just needed to paint half a room um, what I would come in is I would come in and I would do the walls and you can just divide that by two. That's going to give you half of the walls. Um, uh, and so same thing with multiplying. So, oh, let me show you this. Uh, I learned a hard lesson. So I thought I was smart one day and I was doing, uh, I was wanting to do flood cuts and so I was coming in, so let's say, let's pull this drywall down here. And now let's say that we are pulling out, uh, let's say we did two foot flood cuts through this room and we're removing and replacing the drywall, right? Well, I would come over here and I would do uh, the perimeter times two. And that would give me the square footage, unless I'm an idiot and I'm, and I'm not doing the math right. Um, you know, that would give you the square footage of the, a two-foot flood cut. But, uh, uh, you know, I wasn't using the line item that you actually should be using, which is the uh, two-foot flood cuts, uh, linear foot. I was just thinking, you know, it's the same square footage. Uh, but if you use that line item, which is uh, just in your foot, and so this is what you, the line item you use for flood cuts, or two foot tall flood cuts at least. And so this is the same, you know, this is in linear feet and this is in square footage, but this is the same square footage drywall. And holy crap, look at the difference. Like, look how much money I was missing out on just because I didn't compare these two line items. And it's the exact same amount of work but uh you know a big difference in price and so don't make that mistake uh you know there's no telling how much money i missed out on just from you know assuming that they were going to be the same okay so the last thing i want to show you is how adjusters typically identify supplements and if you're going to be sending a supplement in uh, this is typically the way to do it so let's say you're going to supplement an item on uh, an Xactimate. And so let's say this is in a previously approved Xactimate by the insurance company. And you're going through and you are going to supplement an item. Uh, let's say concrete grinding is one. So let's say you didn't have this concrete grinding in there first. Uh, for whatever reason, maybe you forgot it. Maybe you didn't know you could um, use that as an align item. And so... Turns out you do need to use concrete grinding. And so what you can do is you come in and you bold this line item. Uh, I'll just put it back in its place. 
and you can put in your F9 notes why you need this. So now when you send this back to the adjuster, this is how they know what line item that you are supplementing and you don't have to turn in a separate estimate. You can just turn in the same estimate and you bold the items that you're going to be turning in the supplement that you're trying to get approved. But yeah, I guess that uh, is going to be a conclusion for tips and tricks for tonight. Uh, again, I know this wasn't rocket science. I wouldn't consider this advanced, you know, techniques by any means. Uh, but I don't know if I would consider it beginner level either, either, you know, maybe intermediate, uh, I'll say it definitely wasn't beginner level for me. Uh, maybe I'm a slow learner. I don't know. But like I said earlier, you know, it took me a few months to catch, uh, you know, to catch on to some of these little shortcuts, but hopefully you got something out of this. So. All right, guys, I'm going to call it a night. Uh, thanks for watching. As always, please like and subscribe, and I'll keep the videos coming.